So section 8.2 is on areas in the plane. So this should be a pretty easy section for you. We've pretty much talked about area so far. Uh, but we haven't done funny area problems where we have two curves intersecting each other. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. So the area between two curves, we've kind of talked about this before. Um, if I just had one curve, right, that one curve would be represented by the integral of f of x dx from a to b. But since I have this other one as well, well, that's a certain, if I want to talk about the area between them, it's going to be a positive value. So this ends up being a negative integral. So what we do is we make it the opposite in order to make it positive. So that's the area of that one. So putting it together, you get f of x minus g of x dx. And it works for anything, even if it's uh, below. Because think about if I had an f of x and then I had another curve, which was g of x, which was below it. Right, if I want the area between the two curves from A to B, right, it's kind of like finding the whole area for f of x, which would be this whole thing, the whole thing, and then subtracting out the g of x, which is this part. So if you do f of x minus g of x, you end up just getting uh, that part right there. Does that kind of make sense to you? See what I'm saying? So we'll do some more of that. So it says find the area of the region bounded above by y equals x squared plus 1, bounded below by y equals x, and bounded on the sides by x equals 0 and x equals 1. This is when you should always draw pictures. It really will help you. Guys, stop messing with each other. So I, I, know, I feel like I'm in, in fourth grade. Did I tell you guys I got in trouble because I was like taking a ruler and like hitting the person next to me with a ruler? We were like sword fighting with a ruler. I got in trouble in fourth grade. In <laughs> fourth grade. But uh, I still see people doing that kind of stuff like constantly in high school. I don't get it. Like hitting each other. Well, we All right, anyway. <laughs> yeah, true. He does. All right, so we have y equals x squared plus 1. And y equals x, which looks like this, and bounded on the sides by x equals 0 and x equals 1. So here's the line x equals 1, and here's the line x equals 0. So do you see the region that I'm referring to in this part right here? So my top curve is the y equals x squared plus 1. My bottom curve is y equals x. And the sides, those are my a and b values. So I go from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So I set it up with top minus bottom. So I'm going to have x squared plus 1 minus x, and then I go from uh, 0 to 1. And then we put a dx. Remember, dx always goes with the integration sign. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 1, x squared plus 1 minus x, dx, and I can integrate. So I'm going to get 1 third x cubed plus x minus 1 half x squared going from 0 to 1. So I'm going to plug in 1, so I have 1 third plus 1 minus 1 half. And then we always like when it goes from 0, because with polynomials it's always gone. <laughs> so I have 1 third plus 1 minus 1 half, so I'm going to make them all 6's. So 2 6 plus 6 6 minus 3 6. So I get 5 6. That's your answer. So that's the area bounded by those curves. Easy enough? Understand the concept? Okay, so let's try another one. So it says find the area bounded by the graphs of y equals 3 minus x. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3. Minus x means my slope. Remember, this is really the same as y equals negative 1x plus 3. So my slope is negative 1. So I'm going down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. So I'm getting into this graph. And then x squared minus 9. Where is the y-intercept for x squared minus 9? The y-intercept. Negative 9, right? What's the x-intercept? There's 2. 3 and negative 3. Right, it's a parabola. So now this is a little bit different. It's saying find the area that's bounded by the graphs. And I don't say from a certain x value to another x value. So it's this big area right here. 
So the picture helps because now I can tell what the top curve is, what the bottom curve is. I also need to find what x values it goes from, though. This is a typical non-calculator one. I can see them asking something like this on a non-calculator because you're supposed to use all the math classes that you've ever had before, right? How do you find where those two things intersect, where the line and the parabola intersect? It's like substitution elimination, right? You're finding the intersection points. So you have y equals 3 minus x, and you have y equals x squared minus 9. So replace one of the y's. So I have 3 minus x equals x squared minus 9. Set them equal to each other. So add the x over, subtract the 3 over, and you factor. So we get x equals 3, and we get x equals negative 4. And it doesn't really matter what the y values are. That point is negative 3 comma something, and this point is negative 4 comma something, right? You can find the somethings if you want. You don't actually need them. But let's say we find them. So if I plug in 3, oh wait, <laughs> jeez, I told you this daylight savings time is killing me, guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get... Sorry, 3 comma 0, I realized this right before you guys tried for those bonus points, and negative 4 comma something. So when I plug in 3, I get 0. When I plug in negative 4 into either equation, doesn't matter, what do I get? 7, negative 4 comma 7. But it's not really the y values that matter. What matters is from certain x values to certain x values. Peter, stop. So I'm going to have from A to B, like that, negative 4 to 3. And I do my top minus the bottom. So the top curve is 3 minus x minus the bottom curve is x squared minus 9. Notice I put them in parentheses. So I subtracted out the entire bottom curve. So I have negative 4 to 3. I'm going to have 3 minus x minus x squared plus 9, which simplifies a little bit. Some people are really picky about writing it in descending order. I don't really care like that. And then we integrate. So you can go from there. On your homework for this section, I said it's okay uh, to use Math 9, but you have to show this setup first. So you at least have to get it like simplified and ready to go for the integration. But I think you guys all know how to integrate it. It's just like kind of time consuming, right? Plugging all those numbers in. So isn't that nice? This is where you're like, thanks, Mrs. Cox. Thanks, Mrs. Cox. You're the best. <laughs> you're my hero. <laughs> All right, 343 over 6. So that's your answer. I was right in a fraction form, if possible, too. Yeah. Well, looking at the picture, this line right here is on top. So it was the line one. Right, the linear equation and the parabola at the bottom. Yeah, it's like y equals an x plus b. It's a line. Oh. All right, what if you do it the wrong way? What, what do you think happens if you do bottom minus top? You get the opposite answer. Do you guys hear that? That's important. If you do the wrong one, if you do bottom minus top, you get the negative of what you should get. So a lot of people do that on their AP test, and they're like, oh, whatever. I mean, I'll just make it positive in the end. I'll just do absolute values. And that's fine, you get the point for getting the correct answer, but you don't get correct points for any of your setup because you did bottom minus top. You did not do the correct thing. It needs to be top minus bottom. Does that make sense? So be careful. If you realize that on your AP test and you're like, oh, I got a negative answer. It needs to be positive. It's an area. Then all you do is you switch your two integrands, the two parts, like the f of x minus g of x part. Okay? All right, number three. So it says find the area bounded by the graphs of y equals x squared. And y equals, oops, y equals x squared, and y equals 2 minus x squared. So 2 minus x squared is going to start with a y-intercept of 2, and it's going to go down like that. So we have a little, like, football shape. Okay, and we need to go, it says between 0 and 2. So that's the part that's bounded is between, it's not the part that's between 0 and 2. The part that I shaded is the part that's being bounded by those two graphs. So if I just said find the area bounded by those graphs, but then I didn't say from 0 to 2, that's how you would do it. You would find that piece in the middle. So I kind of haven't drawn this whole picture yet, though. Let's find what those points are. If I set x squared equal to 2 minus x squared, 
I add the x squared over, I get 2x squared equals 2. So I get x squared equals 1, x equals plus or minus 1. So those are happening, those intersection points are happening at 1 and negative 1. So what do you think I need to do for my picture? I actually need more shaded in green. You have to go out until 2. So 2 actually, and you have to go out to negative 2 as well. Oh, no, it's just 0, isn't it? Dang it. Sorry, 0. So I gave too much in the middle, didn't I? I feel like I do this every year. <laughs> like I start just sketching it out. I'm like, oh, it's this part. Because a lot of times these problems will say, find the area bounded by these two curves, and it doesn't say a domain. Yeah, so the top and bottom does switch. That's, this is smart. Abby's already figuring out how to do these problems. Like, stop talking. You guys are driving me crazy. Don't do your homework. I know you're helping with calculus. Let's do today. All right, um, so next up. So we're going to do from 0 to 1. And we have our top minus our bottom. So the top is 2 minus x squared. The bottom is x squared. But then all of a sudden it switches. Right? And then we have from 1 to 2, our top is x squared. And our bottom is 2 minus x squared. So this is where these get a little bit tricky. Um, you could if you kept it as the top minus. What are you saying? Oh, that's a plus. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. You could do a negative if you had left it as bottom minus top. And you could just say, oh, well, I'm going to subtract off this part. OK, so at least simplify it out a little bit. So I have 0 to 1. I have 2 minus x squared minus another x squared. So I'm going to have 2 minus 2 x squared. And then I'm going to have the integral from 1 to 2 of 2x squared minus 2 dx. And then you can find both of them. So I should have already found these for you. 2 minus 2x squared going from 0 to 1. Yeah. So the first one is 4 thirds. It doesn't, yeah. It's always top minus bottom. It doesn't matter if it went below. Yeah. Okay, because this curve, uh, I'll draw it in blue. See this one? Yeah. Up there? See how it's the top until we get to 1? And then it's the bottom part of the function once you change? Yeah. And Bob was kind of asking a good question, too. He's like, does it matter that it's below the axis or not? If I asked you to draw rectangles then, I think it would make total sense with rectangles. Um, but basically, if I'm at a height of 5 and I'm at a height of negative 2, when I draw this rectangle in, what's my total height? 7. It's 5 minus a negative 2, which is still 7. And if I'm at 5 and 3 and I'm finding the height there, well, it's 5 minus 3. It's still 2. Does that make sense? So that's why we do like the, the y value minus the other y value. Um, and it doesn't matter if it dips below or not. OK, and then the other one is 8 thirds. So I have 4 thirds plus 8 thirds. So I get 12 thirds, which is 4. So that's our answer. All right, so number four. So it says find the approximate area bounded by the graphs of y equals cosine of x and y equals x squared. So I'm going to call this a calculator section one. These are the types of questions that they ask on the calculator section. There is always an area and volume problem on the free response section. So if we're learning area today, we'll learn volume this later this week. Okay, so what do we have? So we have cosine of x. Cosine starts at 1. It goes down and then back up. That's where 2 pi would be. And then we're bounding with y equals x squared. Looks like that. Both of these are what we call even functions. OK, so in order to find the area that's been bounded, I need to find these two intersection points. And since they're both even functions, they're going to be exactly the same thing. Just one will be positive, one will be negative. Do we understand that? Yeah. OK, so let's find them using our calculator. So plug in cosine of x in for y1 and plug in x squared for y2. And I'm just going to find the one that's on the right side. 
It's going to do first curve, second curve, guess. Okay, and when I do that, I get 0.824132312331 comma 0.679. Doesn't matter on that second one. Okay, and we've talked about this before. It's been a while. We're going to store that value, right? So I'm going to go back to my main screen and I'm going to hit X on my main like blank screen. And when I hit Enter, I get 0.824 blah blah blah. It's giving me that X value. If I wanted the Y value, which I might in just a second. If I want the y value, then I hit y, like alpha y, and it gives that last y value that you just found, too. It will give you the 0.67 something. Okay? Do you guys understand? We're going to integrate with respect to y in a little bit. It's not weird. All right. Um, what was the x value then? So it's 0.824132131. Okay, so we just hit x, and that came up. So I'm going to store it. So I'm going to do store as alpha a. And then I'm going to write that I've now stored that. So I'm going to do a little a, and I'm going to circle it. So I know that that's A. So when I do this integral, if I'm finding the area, it's going to be from the negative A value to the positive A value. Do you see why it would have to be negative A? It's symmetric. Both of them are symmetric across the y-axis. They're even. And then we're going to have our top function, which was cosine of x, minus the bottom function, which is x squared. So we do math 9. We have cosine of x minus x squared, comma, x goes from negative a to a. So you get 1.095. Let's say that. What is that? A was that x value that we found from our intersection point. Okay, now if you were doing this by hand, if you had an easier thing that you could integrate and you were doing it by hand and you saw that you had two even functions, you don't want to go through all of the things by hand, plugging in A and then going in and plugging in negative A. What could you do? Remember we talked about this with even functions? Instead of going from negative A to A, what you could write is the integral from 0 to A, but then we double it. Because this portion is exactly the same as this portion. Okay, so you're just doubling the area. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Uh, you don't have to because this is a calculator active question. I just said, you know, if you had your calculator, so you can just do it like with the math nine. If you had nicer ones, like maybe it was cosine of x intersecting sine of x, well, then that would be values that you would know. But like since it's intersecting x squared, like I don't know what the cosine of 0.824 is. So it would be a calculator question anyway. But the AP test is going towards weird things. Like they have a lot of e to whatever, e to the sine of x intersecting other things. So they're making it so you're using that sign on your calculator. OK. So this one would be one that you could definitely do by hand. So let's set it up. 1.095. OK, so I'm trying to find the area bounded by the curves y equals sine of x and cosine of x between 0 and pi over 2. OK, where are sine of x and cosine of x equal to each other? Yeah, so x is going to be pi over 4. So that's going to be this place right here. So if I want to go to pi over 2, well, sine of pi over 2 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Pi over 2 is right here. So if I'm finding the region bounded by those curves, it's like a little bow tie. It's here, and it's here. You guys see it? Yep, do you guys see it's symmetric? It is. It's symmetric. So you could just do, instead of doing the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the top, which was cosine of x minus the bottom, sine of x, and then adding it to uh, pi over 4 to pi over 2, and now the top is sine of x minus cosine of x. Instead, you could realize that these two are the same area. And if you think about the, uh, think about sine and cosine, why that's true. I mean, one's just a shift of the other. All of those heights are going to be the same, just shifted. Um, so then you could do double 0 to pi over 4, cosine of x minus sine of x. So it makes it a little bit easier. 
All right, so if we're doing it by hand, if I integrate cosine of x, remember the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine, so the antiderivative is positive sine. So I'm going to have sine of x minus the derivative of sine is cosine, so I'm going to have negative cosine. So plus cosine of x going from 0 to pi over 4, but then don't forget that you're going to double it at the very end. So we plug in. So sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Sine of 0, 0. Cosine of 0, 1. So we get 2 times 2 root 2 over 2 is going to be root 2 minus 1. So it's 2 root 2 minus 2. That's your answer. You could also find the decimal approximation. But if it was a non-calculator question, you would leave it like that. Okay, does this make sense on how to integrate with respect to x, top minus bottom, x value to x value? We're going to do something weird now. We're going to integrate with respect to y. Oh, so weird. All right, so we're, instead, of going to, instead of doing top minus bottom, we're actually going to do bottom, or we're going to do right minus left. Okay, it's going to be different. Okay, think about why that could be convenient. Looking at this picture, if I have x equals y squared and x equals 2 minus y squared, right, if I was going to do the top minus bottom thing, I would have to find, like, each rectangle. I'd have to do the top and bottom of each of these rectangles. And then the top and bottom switch, right, so, like, from here to here, the top is, well, actually, I can't even do it. The top is the blue, but it's still the blue for the bottom, so it doesn't even work. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Sometimes it is, like, where they switch, but... This one is two different curves. Okay. Okay. I wish you would have told me I could have gotten your homework, but that's okay. All right. So, <laughs> so we can't do this. We can't, like, the top is the same as the bottom. So you would have to basically, like, you'd have to solve for y. Uh, so you have x equals y squared. You'd take the square root, take the square root. You'd have x plus or minus the square root of x equals y. And that's how you'd refer to it. You'd have this is the square root of x, this is the negative square root of x. And then you'd have to do it for this as well. Right? It would be a lot of work. It's pretty hard to do that. Especially with functions that you can't, like maybe it's, sorry, I shouldn't say function, especially with uh, equations that you can't solve, like you can't get the y by itself. It's not a function. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Like some of these are going to be hard. So we have to learn this method. Some of these are not going to, you're not going to be able to integrate without doing this. Okay, so it's going to be the same idea. Imagine you're turning it on its side, right? If you turn it on its side, this would be the top and this would be the bottom. This is what we call, so we're going to say right minus left. So think about it. So I was just telling you that basically all of these things are different rectangles that are added up. If I have a rectangle and it's at 7 and I go to 3, when I talk about it on its side, its height on its side it's 4, right? It's the right value minus the left value. That's what we're doing. Okay, we're imagining little tiny rectangles. So my right is the function, or not, I keep saying function, <laughs> is the equation x equals 2 minus y squared, and the left is x equals y squared. So when I set it up, I'm going to have the right minus the left I'm integrating with respect to y, so these limits of integration need to be y values. So what do you think I'm going to put for my different y values? From what to what? What's my lowest y value? Negative 1. It's down here. What's my highest value? y value? 1. I go from negative 1 to 1. So this is why it's kind of important that we've always been putting a dx at the end. I mean, there's lots of other reasons why we put a dx. When we do multivariable, it's going to be super important. But uh, this is an example. Like, if I have dy, I want everything to be in terms of y. I want my equations in here to be y's. So I want it to be uh, the right, which was 2 minus y squared. I want it to have y's minus, uh, uh, so right minus left y squared. I want dy, and I want y values, negative 1 to 1. Do you get it? All right, and then I continue my problem just like normal. So I have negative 1 to 1. I have 2 minus 2y squared dy. Do you see any symmetry in this one? 
this whole shape. Do you see how you could just do zero to one and then double it? If you can do that, it'll always save you some work. So when I integrate, I get 2y minus 2 thirds y cubed going from 0 to 1. So I have 2. I'm going to have 2 minus 2 thirds. And then the rest was all 0, right? So I have 2 times 2 minus 2 thirds. So let's see, 6 thirds minus 2 thirds, so 4 thirds. I think we get 8 thirds. So eight thirds should be the answer. I see lots of blank stairs. So do something weird. Why why did you use the wrong squares? Did you split it in half the first uh, Why did I not use what? The y square? Uh, I did. I just combined right here. I did y squared minus y squared and I wrote two y squared. So I did it in there. All right. Next one. So, so it says find the area enclosed by the line y equals x minus 1. So my slope is 1. And this is where it gets kind of hard graphing this. y squared equals 2x plus 6. You could do y equals plus or minus the square root of 2x plus 6. So when you put it into your calculator, you're going to do the square root of 2x plus 6, and then you're going to do the square root of 2, or negative square root of 2x plus 6. Okay, you could also do a quick t-table, and you could plug in different values and try to sketch it out. You can definitely see when you plug in negative 3, that's what gives you 0. Okay, but it's a little bit harder to, so it looks like this in the end. So whenever you're going through this process, you're like, okay, I want to find the area. Can I do top minus bottom? Okay, think about it. On this part right here, would you want to do top minus bottom, like this blue part? No, because the top and the bottom are actually the same curve. That would be one where you'd have to break it up into the plus or minus. Like one is the positive square root, one is the negative square root. So you could do it, it would just probably be kind of messy, right? Okay, so, and then it would change and you'd have top and bottom, and that would be fine on that part. <coughs> okay, can you do right minus left? Yeah, right minus left looks good, right? Imagine you have a little rectangle here. The right side is y equals x minus 1, and the left side is uh, y squared equals 2x plus 6. But you have to be very careful. When you're doing right and left, you need everything to be y's. You need x equals everything has y's. Why, why is the, the right side y equals x minus 1? Uh, it's this line right here. It's kind of the, on the right side of all those rectangles if you draw them on their side. So we would get x equals y plus 1 if I solve for x. So I have everything in terms of y. And then over here, if I solve for x, I'm going to subtract my 6 over, and I'm going to divide by 2. So the easiest way to write it would be 1 half y squared minus 3. That's going to be the easiest way to like integrate. So your area ends up being, everything's going to be y's. I'm going to have my right minus my left. So I'm going to have y plus 1 minus 1 half y squared minus 3 dy. And it goes from y values of something to something else. These are the things that I don't know. How do I find them? I just find my intersection points, right? So since I've already solved for x, I'm going to say y plus 1 is equal to 1 half y squared minus 3. Okay. If it's a calculator active question, what else could you do? Like if you have your calculator, just find the intersection points on your calculator, right? Yeah. Easy. 
All right, so let's say I multiply everything through by 2 because I want to clear that 1 half. So 2y plus 2 equals y squared minus 6. So I have y squared minus 2y minus 8. So when I factor, I have y minus 4 and y plus 2. So it's saying that my y values are 4 and negative 2. So I'm going from a height of negative 2 up to a height of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> don't know what I did. Did too many lines there. It's okay. One, two. Somewhere in there. All right, so I'm going to go from negative two to four for my y values. That's a negative two. One last time, like, how do you know you do right minus left? Top minus bottom? Yeah, you know you do top right minus left because when you try to break up your curve into different like rectangles, like to see your top and bottom lines. Like this top and this bottom are actually on the same curve. So in order to do that, which you could, you'd have to break it up right here, and this would be the square root of 2x plus 6. And this one would be y equals negative square root of 2x plus 6. I guess this is good that I'm doing this because this is the next question. It says, what would we need to do if integrating with respect to x? Draw a sketch. So that would be those two curves. But then all of a sudden it switches right here and we have a different top and bottom. So your integral, if you were integrating with respect to x, would look like this. It would be top, which is the square root of 2x plus 6, minus the bottom, which is um, hang on, negative square root of 2x plus 6. And that would be from here to here. And I don't know what x value that's at. Um, so you would find where it's intersecting. I guess we, so that would be at negative 2 for y. If I plug in negative 2 for y, what do I get? 1 for x? No. Negative 1 for x? So it would be from negative 1 to, or negative 3 to negative 1. And then you'd have plus, so all that with a dx, plus, and then you'd still have to do this portion over here. So then you'd have the top which was the square root of 2x plus 6 minus the bottom, which is that line, y equals x minus 1, so minus x minus 1, dx, and that would go from negative 1 to whatever this intersection point was. So I don't know what the x value is for that intersection point. If I plug in 4 for y, 4 equals x minus 1, I get 5. Okay, look how complicated that is to integrate. Like, that's involving u substitutions. You let u equal 2x plus 6. Right, it's really complicated. Do you guys understand? Okay, this is one of those times, like, remember those tests that we've had before when you guys run out of time? And you're like, I don't know why I ran out of time. I'm like, because you just did, like, the hardest thing ever. And it could have been so much easier. Like, when we first learned derivatives and you had, like, x squared plus 3 squared over uh, x minus, or no, I guess I didn't do x minus, but I did, like, the square root of x raised to 3. Like, I did things like that. And you guys did quotient rule, chain rule on that. But you could have made it easier. You could have multiplied out, divided, subtract your exponents, and so on. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So don't make it hard on yourself. Don't do integration with respect to x if it could easily be done with y. All right, so anyway, so when I do this, so I'll go ahead and do my math 9. If I have, um, and when you put this into your calculator, too, you don't need to do y. Okay, so everybody try to put this into your calculator. You just use x still. You should get 18. Comes out very nice. Did you get it? Okay. Okay, if you don't like all the parentheses, if you have too many parentheses, distribute the parentheses or distribute the negative. And do one last parenthesis, right? All right. So when might we see this on the AP test? Uh, they definitely have one free response question that is just usually dedicated to just area and volume. I can see like find the area of this, find the volume of this, find the volume when it's rotated around the x-axis, find the volume when it's, like see those things on the back wall? Like we're gonna do that later this week too. Um, so they're gonna have one full question like that, but they might also have things that look like this, number eight. 
So this is the birth rate of a population is B of T equals 2200 plus 52.3 T plus 0.74 T squared people per year and the death rate is D of T equals 1460 plus 28.8 T people per year. Find the area between these curves between 0 and 10. What does this area represent? Okay, so we have our B of T, which is some kind of upwards parabola, and it's way up there. Like the, well, the Y intercept is 2200, so it's way up there. And then we have our death rate, which is some kind of line. And we're find the, finding the area between them from 0 to 10. What would that mean? Okay, so your Y value is people per year. And your T value is years. So if I find the area, imagine I have little rectangles that have X value in years oops, and Y value in people per year. When you multiply them, what are you getting? You're getting people. Does that make sense? That's how you would do that problem. You would end up getting the amount of people that are, are you're, you're gaining each year, <laughs> like wherever you are. Okay, does that make sense? So we'll finish that out next time. Nice this time.